This is my chopstick that's actually from takeout from months ago. This soil is pretty. <laughs> I already broke my chopstick, that's okay. I thought we taught you better, Josh. Us. What do you guys think that Ryan would say if I use a fork to dig up the soil? Would he be upset with that? Don't do it, Josh. I'm gonna take your suggestion uh, and I'm gonna get that fork, Don't to be do honest. It. Stay with the chop. Maximilian does not want me to use the fork. That's what I'm saying, Max. Hold your well, ground. Well, what else am I going to use? This is why you don't use takeout chopsticks. If we needed a perfect illustration, Josh just gave it to us. Among other reasons, that's why. See, this is how you should check your needles, guys. If you want to check your needles properly, pull out the fork, make sure that it goes through like, like hair of a, of a princess, you know? I'm not quite sure. You know what I'm talking about. I'm not quite sure how we got here. Small needles, good foliage, compact, good base, good movement, good branching, graft union, not an issue. This is a score. All right. Woo! Yeah, I'm excited. Bonsai is a process of building. We learned how to find a piece of material. Now we're learning how to clean a piece of material. Then we're going to learn how to prune a piece of material. Then we're going to learn how to wire a piece of material. It's, it's this step-by-step -step cumulative building process, and each point is this amazing uh, experience to get to enjoy, right? Yeah, definitely. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> the best part about doing this beginner series and messing up a lot is that if I mess up, it's good because then people can learn from it. So I don't feel as bad. I'm truly trying. Look at that gap, though. Josh, you okay? No. <laughs> Not too bad. That looks nice. Now I'm gonna make this thing beautiful. This is an 80 year project. And then my son's gonna take it. He's gonna learn from the beginner series. Or my daughter, or my daughter. Your son can come apprentice at Mirai. Yeah. And you'll be like, I remember when Josh first worked on this tree. Josh, <laughs> we're not that different in age that I'm gonna be an elderly man by the time you pump out a kid. Super Friday with this pine tree here. So you guys should be able to see this relatively clearly with my fireplace in the background. So being at home during quarantine and styling this pine tree without Ryan, it was like liberating in a lot of ways because I didn't feel the presence of a bonsai master. Can I redo that? You can try. Is Ryan watching? <laughs> I am now. <laughs> I've been waiting to watch this, by the way. <laughs> I couldn't wait to see what Josh did on his own. I could kind of go my own way and take what I learned and just try and put it into practice on my own and feel like some independence, but also to have the Mirai community give me some feedback was kind of like this added element that made it just like more engaging and more interesting and like connected me with people. Gary, I'm having a great time. I've been looking forward to working on this pine for a long time, actually. I, w I, w I wish you would just There's cut that branch out of the way, Josh. Rough front, as of right now. So, so Josh is like really kind of bouncing around, like where's my front, what branches do I have, where's my base, I've got this janky chopstick. And not because it's a takeout chopstick, it's just not a appropriate for bonsai use which is why we use really quality bamboo that still has the rigid exterior surface. Fork, I don't know where the fork came from. This, is, this has nothing to do with Mirai. That is totally Josh, okay? And I do need to clarify that. But when we're dealing with a tree like this and we're trying to uncover that base, we need to take each process one step at a time and stay dedicated and disciplined to that process. I know that it's preferable to clean it up fully and then start wiring from the bottom up, but I, I just couldn't do it. I don't know, I, could, I got stuck so many times trying to decide whether or not a branch was gonna be useful. This is a good example, I think. It's kind of on the bottom of, of a bigger branch. It's not super strong, it's a little wobbly. Is that something that I would cut? And I didn't like not knowing, like it was difficult for me to just make decisions knowing I was messing up, probably. So the hardest part was just choosing branches to keep or lose. 
Let me start cutting some branches off. I will potentially cut this off, but let me start, I think I need to cut off the smaller bits first. Okay, so let me cut off, I think that would be a mistake to make a big decision and cut off a big branch without cleaning it up. I think Ryan would be like, hey, you haven't cleaned it yet. Mm. That away, Josh. If there's, you know, three branches coming from a junction, do I cut that down to two? Is that something I should be doing when I'm cleaning? Because there's a couple of areas here where there's three, four, five branches coming from one spot. Do I want to choose two or three to keep? First and foremost, I think there's a discussion of your defining branch and those two branches at the base of the tree. We've found a front from the perspective of the best base. I don't know that we've maximized best movement and I don't know that we've looked at special features yet. I haven't heard that mentioned, okay? And we know that the best front is an objective analysis and an objective selection of the best of all three of those things, base, line, and features of the tree, okay? So it's preemptive, I think, to be discussing which one's gonna be our defining branch. But if we were to pick which one would be our defining branch, typically in bonsai design, we wanna create the most asymmetrical design. The trunk starts out moving to the right and then ends up moving to the left. We have a prominent piece of the rootage on the right side of the base that anchors asymmetry being pushed to the left. And I would actually propose that the structural branch we utilize be the one that Josh is considering cutting off, okay? That's point one. Point two, do we go through and where we have three branches, four branches at a junction out on the primary branches, on secondary branches, and we have these whorls? Do we clean those out? Not yet. We have to decide on our structural elements first, and once we've decided on our structural elements, then we set the structure of those elements, we understand the length that we want by determining that defining branch, and then we can come back and remove areas of threes down to twos and really rectify that branching design. Biggest branch I've cut off of this tree so far. But hey, you know, we're taking it a step at a time. And with this gone, we'll be able to see a lot more. Okay, it's decided. And then I'll also so that happened. Chop this guy. Hmm. No, I mean, I don't know, maybe. Maybe there's a big structural piece above it. Okay. Wow, okay. And maybe not as bad as I thought. I'll just leave that there for now and potentially gin it later. Whoever helped him make that decision, you did a good job. I now recognize. Because the branch above it on the left is so prominent and gives us that asymmetry to have the counter on the right be shorter, I love it, love it, good, well done. I am about to do my second live stream, but I've been pretty anxious about today. This is only my second tree <laughs> that I will have wired in my life but it's going to come down to whether or not I will be able to execute it myself. So we'll see. I'm pretty worried about it, to be honest. <laughs> it sounds so dire. So <laughs> what Josh is experiencing is one of two beginner experiences, right? You have one beginner that's like, I don't wanna screw this up. I don't wanna hurt the tree. I don't wanna make a wrong decision ah, oh, this is gonna be catastrophic if I screw it up and it almost paralyzes you with fear. The other one is, ah, I got it from a nursery. There's probably like 200 more. Let, Edward Scissorhands, let's chop it up. Let's get dirty. How does this, oh, oh, this is cool. I got another one over here, right? And it's, and either one of those is completely acceptable. I was more along the lines of Josh when I began bonsai. I cared so much about the tree and I loved each tree so much. But just recognize either way and anywhere that you start, you're still starting on the right foot because you're headed in the direction of learning how to do bonsai. The Mirai Lab community has a lot of very talented bonsai practitioners and I want to make them proud with the suggestions that I take from them as well. So, <sighs> yeah, all right, here goes. Oh, that was amazing. That was so amazing. <laughs> I think having it lean to the right feels better to me. But let me see how drastic it can really go here. All right, so this is roughly the planting angle. 
Who knows what that is that drives our process to feel like we need to change or continue to push that design, but I would say if we quantified it, a further degree or a desire to create asymmetry in the design, take the apex off of the center of the base, and really generate movement would be one of those things that would encourage us to continue to pursue changing the angle and pushing that tree further. And in moving to the right, the one thing that Josh did that I think has a lot of merit is he made sure that he got that second section of movement slightly past perpendicular. Although I think it's subtle, I think he accomplished it, and in that he still has value in the design of his tree. With this lean to the right, it feels good to me to, to fill in some negative space on the a little bit lower. But what are your guys' thoughts? Should I be raising this branch up or lowering it down? How do you make that choice, right? How do I make the choice to raise it up? How do I make the choice to lower it? Defining the line base to tip. Looking at what the natural behavior of the tree is or any of those special features, indications that could insinuate environment. Obviously, this is a young piece of nursery stock. It doesn't have a lot of that characteristic, and so we have the ability to choose. But we do know that this is a mugo pine, and a mugo pine is a high elevation pine. And inside of that, we could even utilize the species itself to make some of these determinations of, do we create an alpine form and bring all the branches down? Or do we move into that coastal form and start to represent that up and out that really shows the reminiscent impact of wind? Looks like Josh is going alpine. I support that decision. We'll see if the wire functions. So, oh, that's not too bad. Is that what I'm looking for? Is that what I want? Great job, I did it, I, all right. Okay, so this can get lowered, but this is gonna stay where it is. I think you're right that I can't really move this part of the branch and I'm lowering this. And if I'm lowering this, do I need to do the preformed hook around the trunk? Or do I just wire these two branches together? I had to listen a lot, try to make my own decisions in terms of what I thought was a good, the right thing to do, and then often like put off making those decisions till after the stream because it was like too much pressure for me and gave me anxiety. <laughs> I have anxiety issues already. Now I'm working with trees and there's anxiety issues and this is definitely not helping. <laughs> They're depending on me to survive and this is tough. Okay. No, this is probably not good. No, it's not good. I think I already messed up, guys. Yep. All right, let me show you and you can tell me if this is a goof. It's clearly not good. This is a horrible mistake. At least he noticed it, right? Like, if the wire is not in clear and concise contact with the shoulder of the branch, shoulder of the branch, 360 degrees, circumference where that branch originates from the trunk. We have to come across that with a really nice, clean contact point. Same angle, same spacing, no gaps. We know we don't wrap around that shoulder. We come into it at that 55, 60 degree angle and we exit it at that 55, 60 degree angle. I'm gonna see what I can do here. Let's see if I can salvage this. Oh, this is more successful. This is more successful. I'm happy. I'm happier with this. So, there it is coming mm. from the gin around the back. Still got that space here. there. But that looks pretty nice. And there it is. I think I might have gone a little too far. I'm not upset at that at all, Josh. Right. Gotta make professional sounds. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Professional sound. That was good, that was good. All right, I feel it. I feel that that was directed at me. Definitely. Okay, so that actually did something. Or does it need to be lowered more? Because now it's a horizontal line, right? This is where a bonsai is so hard, right? Like the amount of force and to know how to apply the force and to know where to apply the force and to know how we get a branch like this to move and how much and what wire gauge and all of that stuff is truly that experiential thing where we have to have tried it, we have to have seen where it didn't work and then we have to go back to the drawing board and see how we get it to work. And it is a problem solving process. It is a process of accumulating experience and time 
applying the knowledge and having it not function and then reapplying it and seeing if we can do it better. But the angle, the contact, the spacing, the wire looks beautiful. Once we got past that shoulder and that initial nuance of the preformed hook, everything else looks really, really good. He's having trouble getting the wire to hold because it's such a big, thick, powerful branch. And that's where I say, I wish I would have set him up with four gauge. I don't know if it would have gone better. The preformed hook certainly would have been more challenging. But he's at a point now where that branch that isn't wired could be utilized to be paired with the branch that already has wire, double up the wire that's on that branch and now give it more function. Let's see what he does. I don't think I'm grunting enough, but you know. Definitely needs to grunt more. I don't need to grunt. You do need to, to grunt. Uh, you need to grunt. Make this work. And cut this. I don't just arbitrarily grunt, Josh. It's because I'm doing something. Lowered it a That's bit. Maybe it could be lowered a little bit more. It's not bad. Mm. It's definitely a curve. It goes up and then down. And it's coming forward. And then I raised this up. So from here, should I be wiring out this branch that's connected to the branch that we just wired? Bone size confusing. <laughs> I will move on to this piece. I'm gonna show you guys a bit of a problem here. Well, it's a problem for me because I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. Which of these should I wire out first? Okay. When we come to a junction where we have a fork of two branches, that thicker wire has to provide the backbone that supports those two branches being paired. Typically we say a turn and a half of that thicker wire out onto one of those two forks, preferably the thicker of the two forks if they have a differentiation of size. If not, whichever one the natural turn of the wire enters the most smoothly into, turn and a half and we cut gives support for these two to now be paired together. And that's where Josh is at in the decision-making process. <laughs> I don't know if Ryan would be proud. We'll see, He'll, I'll know. I'll know whether or not he's proud um, when he watches this footage. Started off here, wrapped around here. Then we came out. Pretty good, pretty good. To the end of this branch. Not upset at that. And we made it here. I chopped this off because it was really getting in the way and I have two here, so. So I'm about to start my third live stream with this pine. I um, tried to wire a couple branches beforehand. I successfully did one additional branch. Success is questionable on that one. And I'm a little worried about the design because I'm not super happy with it and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> and it's feeling a little bit. I don't know, there's too, mu too many patterns going on that like gets all kind of moving the same way. Okay, here's an important point in the styling process, especially when it applies to nursery stock. You have this big branch coming off to the right. You've got way too many branches for that to be a singular pad in this very short, small tree. But we have two major structural pieces on that singular primary branch. The piece that Josh dropped down towards the front, this is your defining component. The piece that's existing kind of up high into the rear, why not move that to the back of the tree, create depth in your design, and that is what allows you to fill in the spaces when you remove those structurally flawed pieces in the original cleaning and branch selection process. That's where we divide up a singular branch into multiple pads to give the appearance of a larger tree in a miniaturized form. This establishes scale, proportion, and perspective in our design and is a valuable moment where we can really capitalize on design opportunities. I can try to uh, raise this one up and lower this one. This negative space feels weird, right? So this is bonsai learning process like to the T, right? We move the first branch, drop it down. It was up, it was down. Do we lower it, do we not? Now we've got the secondary piece. Now, in the initial movement of that primary piece, we rolled that branch and what that did is that elevated that secondary piece. And now Josh is trying to take that discrepancy out. But in doing so, the shoulder is already elevated to where it 
shouldn't have been in the very beginning. And this is an unfixable problem at this point in time and one that needed to be avoided in the very beginning. Again, one of the many things that we can take from this initial styling and the next time Josh does this, he's gonna be so much more aware. This is where these first trees that we style in bonsai do help us grow in such an exponential fashion in terms of understanding and really realizing what it takes to make a great bonsai, but also just the tactile experience of doing it with your own hands. So here's the pad we just uh, kind of solidified. All right. I've got a preformed hook out to this branch. And then we've got this wire that comes from over here up to this branch. You can see that here's this pad. Here's this next potential pad. Oh, that's good. Yes. Oh no, this branch is getting absolutely <laughs> destroyed. Oh, poor branch. I think I dug in <laughs> a little branch. too much with the wire when I mm -hmm. placed it. I'm definitely feeling good about this bottom piece, but I do wonder what I can do with this and if I need to get rid of a branch. Here's the interesting thing about watching this happen and recognizing the bonsai practice as it exists in our backyards or our kitchen tables or our garages or wherever we're starting the journey of bonsai is, is it's a very low pressure when you think about it. There's really no impediment to your exploration in the beginning journey of bonsai. And this is really the, the whole process, right? Like the value of bonsai is in the journey. It's in experimenting. It's in trying it out and saying, oh, this is hard. And, and I'm interested by how hard this is. And I recognize I don't get it easily, but if I could do this, imagine how amazing this would look. And that is what creates the carrot that continues helping us stay interested, stay curious, stay evolving in our practice of bonsai. And it's so fun to sit down and watch Josh engage with this process on this level because we've done it together, but now he's doing it by himself. And that is where a majority of the journey is gonna take place. And that's also where the value is derived. It looks like it's about a quarter of the branch. fix the flaw later. I feel that way about all of my life, David. I'll fix that later. It's your tree in the end. We only suggest, but you follow your heart. That's right. I'm, I am following my heart. And again, really appreciate everyone's suggestions. I'm going to continuously follow my heart. Uh, it's hard to do when I know you guys know more than me. I am on my way to making this first pine tree of mine one, as wonderful as it can be. So I just completed the third live stream. In two hours, I wired one more branch. I'm feeling overwhelmed by all of it right now because it's hard to take so many suggestions and then make my own decision and stick with it while live streaming, so. I feel like we've traumatized Josh it's forever. <laughs> I feel like he's, hard to feel like he's traumatized. So up to this point, I've somewhat rushed the decisions because it's in a live stream and not really felt that I have a solid vision of what the tree looks like. So I'm going to take the time to film that process, but then um, know that it's going to take probably hours for me to finish this tree when I was by myself and I wasn't streaming, I was more comfortable, you know, like I was more comfortable to explore, make mistakes, just go with it. It's exciting to see Josh getting to partake in that journey and see his process as a beginner. It's bringing back a lot of memories for me of what it was like when I initially started Bonsai. I think the move to shut down the live stream and allow Josh to really just take his time and conduct himself in the way that bonsai as a beginner is typically pursued, which is with a lot of time and on your own time, having the ability to process and experience and think and feel comfortable with what you're doing. We're gonna dive into what he's done since he shut off the live stream and take a look at his tree as it's evolved to this point so that we can really see where Josh took the design, took the technical application and what's come from his experience. A big takeaway for me from this whole beginner series and especially with this pine tree is to acknowledge those moments of frustration and 
uncertainty and just like give yourself some time away from the process. Because if you're not having fun and like excited to do it, then just don't do it. Let yourself step away from it when it's not fun anymore and then come back to it when you know it's gonna be fun and you're gonna be excited to do it. Here it is, the big, the big reveal. <laughs> wow, Josh. What do you think? Wow, that came a long ways. Thanks. How do you feel about it? I feel much better now that I put some secondary wire on it. Ah, you really uh, turned a corner in terms of decisiveness with the piece. That, that, that's the biggest thing that I take away from it is you decided that you were gonna do bonsai. I have all these suggestions, I have all this feedback, I have osmosis stuff from you. I also just want to like have fun and be creative and like just go for it and yeah. know that I'm going to mess up plenty, but that it'll be, there'll be a lot to take from it, so. I remember that moment for me. Yeah? Yeah. It was a very specific moment. I was at Ted Madsen's study group. I had this tree that I'd been like trying to make look like what I saw in the books, you know, like a bone, like I'm trying to do trying to do it right and everybody was telling me how you do bonsai like your experience but it wasn't online it was just, it was bonsai clubs and yeah. experience oh you should do this you should do this and it became so debilitating and then Ted Madsen said e either you're going to make a, it a bonsai or you shouldn't be here right. and he walked off and I was like well okay <laughs> and then I was like oh that's what it feels like yeah yeah no, it seems like you had that moment I did yeah Every time you do it, you're gonna get better and better and better. That's the journey of bonsai. That's the value of bonsai, you know? Yeah. I mean, this is your starting point. That's a pretty advanced starting point, so. Awesome. Well, I guess that speaks to the osmosis of working at Mariah. <laughs> <laughs> Something, <laughs> something. Not just osmosis, I've <laughs> obviously paid close attention yeah. to a lot of stuff. Yeah, you've been invested. Yeah. Very cool. Cool. Yay, yay for Josh. I love it. Bonsai master. Done. <laughs>